What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to learn how to use MySQL to select and filter data. The filters we're going to be looking at are where, distinct, between, like, limit, and, or, in, and order by. By the end of this video, we will have a web page for each of these filters. Let's look at the where page. We have our nav bar up here where we can easily check out any of the filters we want to check out. We're going to display out our page title, and then we're always going to display out all of the data available to us in our table. We have a bunch of Red Bulls, a few different types, sugar-free, tropical, different sizes, different expiration dates, and different flavors. Below, we're going to display out our query that we're running. In this case, we're targeting the where filter. Size set to 8 ounces. So here, we get the four 8 ounces back out of all of the data available to us. Then we are going to dump out the debug from PDO. It basically says this is the SQL we want to run with our variable here. And then the actual SQL that was sent which is PDO replacing our variable with the value we're looking for. In this case, any 8-ounce Red Bull. Then down at the bottom, we're just going to dump out the raw PHP array that came back from the query, where each array key is the name of the column, and then, of course, the value in that column. We're going to go over each of the filters just like that. Before we start coding, we need our database. I have included the database SQL for this in the repository on GitHub. Download it. Hop over to your phpMyAdmin and do an import. And the SQL file is called refrigerator SQL. Import that, and you should see one table. We have our drinks table. Click on the drinks table, and our drinks table contains 10 Red Bulls. We have an ID, a name, type, flavor, sugar free. That's a flag if it's sugar free or not, size, and an expiration date. Over my www blog code folder, I created a mysql underscore php underscore PDO folder. This is the folder that we'll be working in for this video. I'm going to open that up and the first thing I'm going to create in here is a global data.php file. This will be included on every single web page we create. It's going to contain global defines, variables, and some functions that we can reuse on each web page. Begin by defining some global variables. Our database credentials. Database host, database username, database password, and the database name. Host is localhost. Username on WAMP is root, no password, and my database is refrigerator. Then we're going to actually connect to our database. We're going to create a function called getDatabase. We're storing this variable here in the global data so that we have access to our database variable in all of the other web pages we create when we include this file. Here in our getDatabase function, the first thing we need to specify is our DSN for PDO. This is a string where we define the host and the database name. And we're going to replace these with our defines up here. After our DSN, we want to specify some options for the PDO return. We're going to specify here is the fetch mode. We're going to set this to PDO fetch associative array. That way when the array comes back from the database, the keys in the array will be the same name as the columns. Then we can move on to our try catch. So if something goes wrong in the try, we're going to dump out the error message. If everything goes well in the try, we're going to return a new PDO object. First parameter in the PDO is DSN. Then we want to pass in our username our password, and our options array. Over in our web browser, MySQL PHP PDO folder, there's our global data. We're going to click on that, and our PDO object has been returned to us. Let's say I change my username to root2, which is not a valid user. We should fall into here and die, and we should see a message displayed. There we go, access denied for root2 at localhost. That is how the database connection function works. Now we're ready to use it to query the database. The next thing we're going to be using on every single page is all drinks. That is all of the data from the table, all 10 rows. We want to display at the top of every page so we always can see what we're querying against. And we're going to pass in our database variable that we just defined. Here we're going to define the SQL we want to write. Very simple SQL. We're going to select everything, which means select star. We're going to get all the columns from the table. We say from the table name drinks. Then we need to create a statement and prepare our database. What this does is PDO is now preparing our database with the SQL we just defined right here. Then we want to execute the query. Once the query has been executed, we can return the results. The results are in our statement, and the function in our statement is fetch all. Now we'll verify that our all drinks has actually returned us all of our drinks. Do a print R on our all drinks. Uh, but we have to remember we're passing in our database, so we have to allow this function to take in our database. Back to our global data, and we see all of our Red Bull has been returned to us. Everything on the table is here, 
and the arrays are keyed by the column names in the database table. Back in my folder, I'm gonna create an index file. And the first thing we're gonna do is include our global data file. Now we have access to these functions, these defines, and these variables. Get rid of that. Print our statement. Our index file is going to just display all the data, a select all statement. That's the example that our index file will contain, which is gonna be the exact same as get all drinks. Select star from drinks, and we're gonna run these same statements right here. Except we're not gonna return anything, we're gonna call this our query drinks. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call a display view HTML. And this function is gonna handle displaying everything out to the browser. We're gonna pass in our SQL, we're gonna pass in all the drinks, we're gonna pass in our query drinks, and we're gonna pass in our statement. We're gonna define this function back in our global data. Start out by defining a page title. Our page title is gonna be MySQL select, and then what we're doing here is we're just getting the basically the file name, um, our script file name. So this strips out the .php after it. So it'll just be MySQL select, and then in our index file case, it'll be string to upper index. Then we're gonna write our HTML. And in the head, we're simply gonna display out our title. Then in our body, we want to display out a nav bar. This is gonna be pretty straightforward. It's just gonna be a table with all of the links in it. Currently, we only have one link, so we'll add them as we go. Here we have a, a select all, and it's gonna to go to our index.php file. After the nav bar, we want to display out our page title again. This time it will actually display out on the page, a line break here. Then we want to display out all of the drinks, right? A function for displaying drinks, and we just have to pass in a drinks array to it. First one we want to display is all drinks that came in right here. We're gonna define our display drinks function right here above our display nav bar function. It takes in an array of drinks, and it's simply going to display another table. The first row on the table is going to contain the column names from the database. ID, name, type, flavor, sugar-free, size, and expiration date. Then we need to loop over our drinks. Each drink gets its own row, and of course we display out each of the values corresponding to each of the columns. And that is our display drinks function. Stop for a second and check out the browser. Looking good, we have our nav bar up here, select all. If I click on that, I go to index.php. We have our page title here and in the tab. And we have all of our drinks displayed correctly here. The correct values are in the correct columns. After display all drinks, we're gonna do another line break, and then we're going to create a div here. First thing in here is another h2 tag, and we're gonna dump out the SQL. That is the SQL that we're writing. Then we're gonna call another display drinks function, but this time we wanna display the query drinks that we queried in our web page. After our query drinks, we're gonna do a PDO debug. We're gonna use our statement here, our PDO object. We just have to call dump debug params, and it's gonna dump out the SQL that was used when PDO tried to query our database. Then we're going to dump out the raw results, just dumping out the array that came back. Refresh our page. Below all of our data, we have the SQL we're running, which is select star from drinks again. PDO debug just tells you what PDO sent to the database, and then the raw results array down here. Now let's move on to our where filter. I'm gonna copy my index file over, and we're gonna name this where. Over in our global data file, we have to add our where onto our nav bar. Title it where, and it goes to the where.php file. Over in our browser, now our where is right here, along with our select all. What we're going to do here is we're going to do select star from drinks, but we're going to add on where size equals 8 ounces. Instead of all of the data here, we should only see the first four rows because they have size of 8 ounces. To do this, we're going to come over here and we're going to say where size, that's the column that we're going to query on, equals and then we put our variable here, size. After our SQL, we need to define our params array. Here we say size equals eight ounces. This is how PDO works. Anytime you have a variable in your SQL up here, you have to put a variable here instead of the actual value. Then in the params array, you key that array based on the variable name you gave it up here. The size will be replaced with eight ounces because this matches this. This could be you know, anything you want it to be, as long as a key, matches the variable you defined up here. And the variable up here always starts with a colon. I always name mine the same as the column, that way when I look at the params array, I know what's being replaced. Then we have to use that parameters array in our execute state. Pass that along in there. That tells PDO, hey, we have some parameters we would like to replace in our SQL. Refresh our where page, scroll down, and it only returned the eight ounce Red Bulls, just like we wanted. 
Our PDO debug looks a little different now because we actually have parameters. Here's what we wrote with our variable, and here's the PDO replacing it with the variable of eight ounces. And again, our raw response. Next filter is going to be our AND filter. I'm going to copy the where, and I'm going to name it AND. Open that up, add on the AND to our navbar. Refresh our where page, and click on the AND. Now, we have a where size equals eight ounces, but now we want to get Red Bulls that have eight ounces and they are sugar-free. How do we do that? We say where size equals eight ounces and the sugar-free column is one. In that case, we should only see two rows returned. Over in our and.php, we already have the where, size equals size, add on an and. We're looking at the sugar-free column, and here's where our value of one is gonna go, but since it's a value in our SQL, we have to create a variable for it. Then down here in our params array is where we set sugar-free variable equal to one. Refreshing our page, we see our SQL, we see our query worked. We got back the two Red Bulls where the size was eight ounce and sugar-free. Here's our sent SQL from PDO. Our sugar-free and size were replaced with their correct values. Now we're going to copy our and.php and rename it to or. Open that up, hop over to our navbar function and add on an or. or.php and an OR title. Refresh our AND page and we see our OR pop up in the nav bar. Click on the OR. And for our OR statement, we want to get anything that's eight ounces or we want to get anything that's tropical. In that case, we should be getting back seven rows, the first four eight ounces and the last three tropicals. In our SQL statement, we have to update this AND to be an OR. Then we're looking at the flavor column. Again, a flavor variable is required here since we're going to be setting flavor to tropical. Now if we refresh our page here, you see we have our four eight ounces and our three tropicals. Now we're going to be looking at the in filter. I copied over the or, named it in, and we're going to add this onto our navbar. Refresh our or page and we have our in. The in filter is going to say you give it an array and it will return you anything that's in that array. We're going to give it an array. We're going to, we want to get anything that is named Red Bull dash sugar free and we're going to get anything that's named Red Bull dash tropical. We should see three sugar-free rows and three tropical rows. So what we do here is we select star from drinks and we say where name, our column, equals and then our array. Those two names that we're looking for are values, so we're going to say name one and name two. We have our two variables here. Add them to our parameters array. Sorry, this needs to be in, not equals. We're going to replace name one with Red Bull dash sugar free. Second one, we're going to replace with Red Bull dash tropical. Refresh our page. You see we got back our three sugar frees and our three tropicals. Looking at the sent SQL, you see how our array here of variables got replaced with the variables that we specified. Now, just like in, there is also a not in. So if we said not in name one and name two, we would only get back names that are Red Bull because everything else is either sugar-free or tropical. Refresh the page. Now we're getting where name not in, so we only get the four Red Bulls back. We're getting back things that are not sugar-free and not tropical. Now I'm going to convert this SQL to an array because we we will be able to choose not in or in. First off, we have our in, and the only difference is the not. Now we have to have a way to get one of these array keys out of our SQL. And to do that, we're going to define it again right here, SQL equals, and we're going to check for a variable in the URL. If the get filter is set, so you can pass along filter equals in the URL, and if what you pass along in the URL is actually in this array, so basically if it's in or not in, then we're going to let you use that filter. Otherwise, we're going to default to in. Refreshing the page, it defaults to in, just like we specified. And if I tag on a question mark filter equals not in, you see it changes to not in, and we get back our Red Bulls. From here on out, that's how the pages that have multiple statements in them are going to work. We're just going to check for a get filter. If it's there, then we know which select statement to use. Back in our global, we have to add a not in. And we just tag on filter equals not in. Now in our nav bar, we have in and not in, because this is our not in. Now we're going to copy over our or, and we're going to name it distinct. Add another navbar on here, 
distinct.php, no filters on this one. And we're actually going to break after every five for a new row. So one, two, three, four, five. Now that our distinct is in our navbar, refresh our page and we have our distinct. Click on that. Distinct basically means return me all rows that are different from each other. If you just did select distinct star on the whole table, every row is going to be different because it has an ID that's different. So we're going to modify our or statement down here to be select distinct from drinks where size or flavor. And we're going to only request the name, the flavor, and the size. First of all, let's just request those few columns. Give you a better idea of what we're doing here. Because we're requesting only three columns, we're going to need to copy all of our HTML here from our display view HTML and modify it a little bit. So we do our page title, and then we're going to get all this HTML right here, paste that right there. We display the query drinks. We have to remove some of the columns. So over here in display drinks, I'm going to copy this, paste it right there, and only keep the columns that we're returning, name, flavor, and size. But we're still doing the or, we just are doing the name, flavor, and size. And our query drinks are what we need to loop over. So for each query drinks as drink, we display out the data. Refresh our page. Our query data down here displayed out only displays the three columns that we're returning. When we add the distinct, it's only going to return distinct rows here. So instead of two sugar-free regular eight ounces, we'll only see one. This is comes in handy when I'm just asking, you know, what options do I have? Display the options based off name, flavor, and size. You want to display this twice. You just say we got Red Bull sugar-free eight ounce. We got Red Bull regular 8 ounce and we got Red Bull Tropical 12 ounce. And that just takes one word distinct right here. Add that, refresh the page, and boom, there we have the options available to us. Next up, we have our between. I'm going to copy over our in file and rename this between. In our nav bar, we're going to add on between. Between, like the in, is going to have a filter on it because there's two different queries we can run. There's the between and then there's the filter not between. Get some examples of both of those. Refreshing our distinct page, we have our between and our not between. What we're going to do with the between is we're going to look at the expiration date column. Our first SQL statement, we're going to look for anything from 1101 to 1201. That would mean these three get left out of the return because they're 1001. Here we're going to have a between and we're going to have a not between. We're going to select everything from drinks where expiration date between. That's where we put our between keyword. Then we're going to do a cast. Here is where we would specify our date value. So we're going to create a variable for it. Then we do and, and we do another cast. This time it's for the end date. We're looking for this column where it's between this and this. Our not between is the exact same, except for, you guessed it, we do not between, just like that. Then we're going to get the SQL we want to run. Default to always be between if nothing is specified. And our params array needs to be updated with our new variables we defined up here. Start date and end date. Start date is going to be 1101, and the end date we're going to look for 1201. Refreshing our page, we're on the between page. Here's our updated SQL, and we only got the 1101s and the 1201s. And this is what our sent SQL query looks like. Clicking on our not between, we should see only the 1001s get returned, because it would be the exact opposite of what we just queried for between. And that's what we get back. We're looking for any rows where the expiration date is not between 1101 and 1201, and we get the three ten of ones returned just as expected. Now comes the like filter. Copy over the between and rename it like. Over in our global, we're gonna add on our like. There's a bunch of different likes that you can do. We're gonna look at four of them. The like end, like start, and we're gonna look at not like start. So we need some filters, like end, like start and not like start. Refresh our not between page. There we go. Let's hop over to the like. The first like we're going to look at is we're going to look at the name column and we're just going to say, hey, give me any row that has sugar in the name. We're going to go a step farther in this one and we're going to create this as an array as well because each of these likes we're going to pass along different parameters. So we want to specify the SQL and the term that we're going to be doing the like on. First one is going to be sugar and we're looking at the name column where name, like, 
I'm going to do a concat, starting out with a percentage sign. Then this is where our value would go, our term. Like everything, we always create a variable for our values. So name that term, and then again, another percent sign. This just says we don't care about anything before sugar in the name. This says we don't care about anything after sugar in the name. So it's just looking for the term sugar anywhere in the name. We're going to update this variable to be the selected SQL. Set it to be like any by default. Now this is going to be an array. It'll have a key for the SQL and a key for the term. Let's update our parameters here, term, and we're going to be looking for our selected SQL term. That's the value. So this will be sugar by default. Our prepare statement also has to be updated. We have to specify the SQL key from the selected SQL array that we found. And we also have to pass along that string here, not an array. If we refresh the page, scroll down, we should only see items returned that had sugar in the name. We got our three rows back, our three sugar-free Red Bulls. And this is what the sent SQL from PDO looks like. The next like we're gonna look at is the like end. This means that we get, we're gonna get back a name, but only if it ends in a certain letter. And we're just gonna say anything that ends in L, return. Otherwise, don't return it. We should see these Red Bulls, the tropicals, because they all end in L. And to do that, we update our term to be L. Now we're not looking for it anywhere in the name. We're only looking for it at the end. So we get rid of the end. This basically means now we don't care what's before the L, but it has to end in an L. Back to like end, scroll down, and we get what we wanted, all the Ls everything ending in L. We can also do the like start, which means it has to start with this. For this example, I'm just going to check for anything that starts with Red Bull dash T. We don't care what's after it, but it has to start with that string. In this case, we should see the three tropicals returned. We're gonna copy our like end, name it like start. And this is just the opposite of the like end. Now, instead of the percent sign before the term, we do the percent sign after the term and then we update our term to be Red Bull dash T. Refresh our page. Um, oh, we're still on the like end. Click on the like start. There we go. Anything starting with Red Bull dash T gets returned. Last but not least, we're just gonna do a not like so you can see an example of that. Basically, it's gonna be this, but it's gonna say name not like. Things that are not starting with Red Bull T. So everything else will be returned. I'm gonna copy over like start and simply say not like start. Only thing we have to do is add on a not. Click on our not like start page, we get the filter not like start, and we see that everything was returned where the name did not start with Red Bull dash T. Next up is order by. I'm going to once again copy the between and rename it order underscore by. Open that up, and we got to add on our order by to our navbar. Order by ascending, then we're going to do order by descending. We don't need any filter on the first one because it's going to default to that. But we do need a filter on the descending one. So we have our order by ascending and descending up here now. I'm going to click on order by ascending. What this does is just orders it based off whatever column and however you like. So we're going to just do a simple example here of expiration date. We're going to do an order by expiration date ascending and descending. So the ascending one should start with the lowest first going to the highest because it's ascending. And the opposite is for descending, right? You start with the highest date and then you go down to the lowest date. So order by ascending, order by descending. And we don't even need a where for this. We're just gonna get all the data, but we wanna order it. Order by expiration date ASC. That would be the ascending. Copy this over. And for descending, we just do DESC. We're gonna default our SQL to be ascending. No parameters for this query so we can get rid of our params array. Refresh our ascending page, and ah, we forgot to update the name. Order by, order by, refresh, it should go to order by. We have our ascending dates here, from 10.01 to 11.01 to 12.01 as we go down the list, which that's what we wanted. And it should be the opposite for descending here. When we click on our descending, you can see 12.01, 11.01, at 10.01, so there we go. And lastly, we have our limit. I'm gonna copy my order by and rename it to limit. Create one more last row here, and we're gonna have two limits. We're gonna have a regular limit, and then we're gonna have a limit with an offset. Let's refresh our page and head over to our limit page now. We're gonna select all the eight ounce Red Bulls, all four of them, but you know, we only feel like drinking one of them, so we're gonna put a limit one. By doing that, 
we will only get back the first row right here. Over in our limit here, this is limit and this is limit offset. Default our SQL to be limit. Start out by doing select star from drinks. We get all of them. Then we're going to say where size equals 8 ounces. We got to add some parameters in here again. And the parameters here are just going to be size. 8 ounces. Then we pass those parameters into the execute statement. Now this will get us all the 8 ounces, but to do a limit, you just simply say limit and then how many you want to get back. One. Refresh our limit page and there we go. We got back one. If you wanted two, you could get back two. Change it to two and refresh it. Now we got back the first two Red Bull 8 ounces. The limit also lets you get an offset. For the order offset, I'm going to look at 12 ounce Red Bulls and we're going to do an order buy on it first. Order buy expiration date ascending. So let's not do the limit yet and let's just see what that looks like. Click on the limit offset. We have all of our 12 ounces right here and the order is expiration date ascending. Now to illustrate the limit with an offset here, I'm going to show you how to get these last three from this query. In this query, these are all indexed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We're going to say start at the third index and return three Red Bulls, which means we'll get these three rows back starting at the third index and return three from that index. And you pass in two numbers. The first number is the offset you want to start at. We want to start at the third index and we want to return three Red Bulls. If I refresh the page, we should only see 8, 9, and 10 returned. There we go. And that is how you do a limit with an offset. So that's going to wrap up this video, learning how to use MySQL to select and filter data. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.